day number 10, and we're headed back to finger picking to talk about how to add some life to our quarter tones. Enter to win, brand new ukulele from Flight, the Antonia Tenor. Get your tabs for free, pin in the first comment of the comment section. You can also think about becoming a Patreon, get more tabs. Once you have your ukulele brain attention span and tabs, follow me on in and let's spice up our finger picking. Come on in, let's do it. Day number 10 and we're finger picking again. That's where we're gonna start. Where we left off, we were doing one, two, three, four. I really encourage you to spend some time with that thumb. And hopefully you did. The more time you spent doing that, the easier this lesson's gonna be. So we're actually only gonna add one note and then that will be good enough for your entry to the challenge. And then like I've done for the last couple lessons, if you wanna take it a little further, I'll show you how to do so. So we play the first beat just like that. Thumb on the G string, index on the E, middle on the A, one. Then your thumb is gonna drop down and play the C string, second fret, for the second beat. One, two, oops, one, two, and. Immediately after that on the and, which is called syncopation, your index finger is gonna play this E string. So you're gonna get one, oops, one, two, and. keep missing the string because I'm looking at the tiny little screen to make sure that I'm getting my fingers in there and I keep missing the C string. It's hard to see that. Maybe if I angle it at a... See? One, two, and. One, two, and. One, two, and three, four. And you just go back up to the G string on the third beat and then the fourth beat on the C string. One, two, and three, four. It's just one extra note, but it sounds completely different. If we listen to the old one, compared to the new one, completely different, one extra note. And that is the finger picking pattern that we're gonna use for the whole 12 bar that you can use for your entry. So over the C, it's gonna sound like this. And then over the D7, it's gonna sound like this. So let's go ahead and finger pick through a 12 bar. We'll use our for the turnaround. And we're gonna go ahead and use for an intro. So this is gonna be our first full 12 bars with an intro and a turnaround. Um, okay, so nope. remember those tabs on the screen? We're gonna use that old first turnaround for our intro. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Four, one. start over if you wanted to and then that's gonna work great for your submission and you see just how easy it is to give a little bit of variety to this now now let's just talk about how to be better at playing the blues you that and you can do that whenever you want you could go one and two three four you go one two three and four you could go one two three four and you can go one and two and three and four and. You can add that and anywhere you want. You can also, instead of adding the and with your index finger on the E string, your middle on the A. You can go one, two, and. Or you can do both. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that in your own personal playing to give it more variety. If we check out these four measures here, our first and second measure are our new pattern. The 
the third measure is our old one. One, two, three, four. In the fourth measure, we play one, two, and on the E string, back to the G string, and on the E string, back to the C string, and then and on the A. So it goes one, two, and three, and four, and. I like to, in general, if I'm arranging blues or if I'm improvising blues, if I'm playing blues, I like to make, in the first four measures, measure four the most dynamic because it pushes the change into the C7 a little more, what's the word, interestingly? But it's not interesting. It, it creates this unique sense of tension and dynamicism, dynamicism before moving on. So let's go ahead and pick up these four. Random solo. Okay, so the next four, C7, is our new pattern. And then G7, we're going to do that same pattern that we did on the fourth measure, but we're going to do it on both the seventh and the eighth. This is what's called a motif. Sometimes if you have an idea that's very interesting, repeating it exactly the same can be interesting or adding a slight modification. In this, in this context, we added the modification by doubling down. So these four. D7 and C7, exactly the same. And then we're going to get to our triplets. One, two polar, three polar, four polar, one, two, three, and four. And we're still going to use four for our intro. Now you're probably wondering why I'm screaming for or yelling for. If you haven't got that, I'm yelling for because I'm counting the rest. If you don't count the rest, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four. You can go ahead and start your 12 bar one beat too early, which isn't necessarily a bad thing when it's done intentionally, but when it's done unintentionally, it is kind of a bad thing. So let's go ahead and play through these four as well. Um, you can use these or the other four for your submission. They both work, but at least take a look at these, even if you're not planning on using them, to try to push yourself further and a little farther, which is synonymous with further. In fact, I think they're the exact same word. Further, farther. No, one has a U and one has an A. Hey, it's a little farther over there. It's further? Yeah, it's farther. I don't know the difference. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four. Day number 10, folks. We are two thirds of the way in, and we just have 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 left. We might switch gears. I might just go full solo for the 
the last couple of days, I actually haven't fully committed to what I'm going to do for the last five lessons, but here we are at day number 10. By the time you're watching this, I've probably already filmed and edited those, but as of this exact moment in real time on June, on July the 10th, 2021, I don't know. So we'll see. We will see, yeah, we will see, yeah, we will see. champions. That includes you. <laughs>